Okay. So basically it is it, like you had said, stress plays a role in every aspect of our being. So it's really important yes. that we pay attention yes. to what levels and what are our triggers and what are, can we reduce mm -hmm. them? And I love how you mentioned about the journaling, you know, giving our body a safe space to release that where we don't have yes. to sit in some, you know, counselor's office, but for some that might be it. But for others, yes. journaling yes. could be their own way to release those emotions so that they don't get stuck. And then they yep. don't become um, further toxins within our body. So um, yes. I think that that is really true. Uh, like you had said, respect the messages from the body. You know, oftentimes I've heard people say that, you know, if we listen to the body when it whispers, we don't have to hear it scream. And that is exactly what yes. you're addressing is, like the everyday, like the everyday stressors, yes. find a way to release that so that it doesn't build up and become like a volcanic eruption. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, Even going outside and getting direct sunlight or taking off your shoes and just placing your feet on the ground and grounding. I mean, those, it, it sounds so simple, but it works miracles. I mean, just being one with the earth and letting yourself ground. I mean, we are in front of electronic devices all the time. We are inside. We're not getting the sunlight that we need. I mean, that can be huge. <laughs> yeah. And especially nowadays, you know, uh, it's not just the phone, you know, our phones mm -hmm. have become our little mini computers. It's become our social yeah. centers. It's become so many areas of, um, an opportunity for us to compare ourselves, which we know that comparison yeah. is emotional cancer, oh, right? We're, it, we're it is. comparing somebody's, you know, final cut against our threshing floor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so um, it is really difficult. So being able to detach by getting into the, you know, the ground and doing that grounding. Um, mm -hmm. I've even seen people, um, you know, I live up North and I've seen people do it even amidst snow because yeah. they're committed to go out there. Um, they use it as a version of cryotherapy. Um, yeah. so there's all of those ways, but I like that you just said too, just like trying to make sure that it's simple, but it's consistent to get rid of that yep. daily. Yep. Yep. Um, Okay. Thank you so much. And it looks like we've got some, some live questions, which is awesome. So um, I'm going to get to those. Michael has said, what are some things that your patients think they are doing correctly based on what they read or heard that is not often the case? So oftentimes no. we hear things, we think it's the, we're doing, we're on the right path. And then they come to someone like you and you're like, mm, not so much. Yeah. Can I, you hear yeah that? I, I get this a lot. <laughs> um, I, I think one of the biggest things, and I find this with my women, because I mostly work with women, um, I, I think exercise is one of the biggest problems. Not that exercise is bad because we need exercise, we need movement, we need that. But by the time they come to me, they are, they're at that ledge and their bodies are so stressed out, they are so sick, and yet they're trying to push through and exercise every morning because they they need that rush to make it through the day. And they don't realize that what they're doing is stressing out their body even more. And the women that I have convinced <laughs> or highly encouraged to step back, even if it's for a couple weeks and just walk, they can tell that, oh yeah, you, you were right. My body just needed a break. Like I was adding more stress. Um, the other thing that I find there is so much greenwashing when it comes to food labels and we think we are eating something that is healthy and nutritious and it might be better than some of the options, but it's still driving inflammation. So a lot of the protein bars, um, protein shakes, those kind of things, they're, they're quick fixes, but it, it, it's counterproductive in a lot of, a lot of, a lot of instances, um, just because they have all these extra ingredients that are not helping their state of health at all. So back to reading labels, making sure that it's simple ingredients and minimal. Um, I, I feel like those seem to be the two biggest areas 
Um, I'm trying to think if there's another one. Food, well, protein, that would be the other the other area. Um, and and I've seen this when my clients are working with trainers, um, their protein intake and like micromanaging their food intake. <laughs> I don't necessarily like to micromanage it. I feel that women, especially, I think all of us, but we need adequate amounts of protein. And I find a lot of my clients are under eating and I've been guilty of that as well, but you know, you're trying to maintain your weight, you're trying, or you're trying to lose weight. Um, you maybe don't have time. So what you do eat is a protein bar, <laughs> a protein shake, and, and they're under eating significantly. So when I see that, um, like I, I like to encourage adequate amounts of protein. I say a gram per pound of ideal body weight. Um, but I always start with like, let's, let's aim for 90 grams a day because most of them aren't even getting close to that, let alone if they need 130 or 150 grams of protein. And when they start, when they, they move from micromanaging their food and severely under eating to actually eating the protein that they need, the, the healthy fiber, that healthy, um, you know, they do notice that they feel considerably better. You know, they have more consistent energy. Um, and then they're able to go back to working out, maybe not quite like they did before, but, you know, in some modification. Okay. Yeah. I think that that is very true. I think a lot of times people think, well, I have to work out, but then working out does stress our bodies and it can cause yeah. you know, imbalances with hormones, like, and yeah. just all that you were just talking about too. And then if you're doing the bar and the shake, that's great. If you've got like one day that you do that, but on a consistent basis, yeah. you know, that does become like a depletion of vitamins and minerals at that point. So, yep. um, yep. I think that that's really important. So thank you so much, Michael, um, for asking that question. Um, okay. Another question came in. Jewel has said had mercury amalgams removed, um, eight months ago, they're 71. They were put in when they were about nine or 10 years old. So obviously about six decades worth. Um, they've been detoxing. However, would love to hear if there's any thoughts that you have regarding that process or what they can continually do with the detoxing process. Did you have them removed by a biological dentist or a regular dentist? Oh, that is a great question. Um, let's see. Where's Jewel? Let's see. I'll ask it there. Want to come on and they can even answer this question. And I can talk about it or uh, talk about my thoughts on that. Um, biological I, I, oh, biological, biological okay. answer. Um, and okay. basically just wanted to further ask, she says, do you think all the mercury could ever be completely removed? Mm, good question. Um, I mean, you can, you can test you can do a hair tissue mineral analysis. I mean, you can test for those toxins and see. Um, yeah, I had mercury amalgams removed as well. And um, when I did my hair tissue mineral analysis test, I, my mercury levels weren't, weren't high. I mean, you could tell that there were some there. Um, but I feel like detoxification of some sort is, is beneficial. Um, and there are many different heavy metal detoxification protocols out there. I think the one thing that I stress, especially when we're thinking about any sort of detoxification or parasite cleanse or something major, I feel like your body needs to be prepped first. Um, you, you don't just want to jump in something like that because you can have some severe herxing reactions and you, you might not like those. Um, you know, they can range from a headache and fatigue to rashes and, um, you know, it, it can vary from person to person. So I do feel like it's important to do some sort of detoxification, just do it in the proper way, prep your body or have someone help you prep your body. So your detox, detox pathways are opened. 